the borders of the native land of the Setos haven't changed in 3,000 years. The villages still stand where they were standing 500 to 600 years ago, but there are hardly any descendants of the ancient Chud people left in these villages. Until the revolution of 1917, there were more than 20,000 Setos living here. According to the All-Russia Census of 2010, there are only 214 left. It's like the disappearance of a song. It's exactly like that in our Pechora region. There are very few setos left, and there is nobody to inherit our traditions. There are more of them in Estonia, and the young people there do display some interest. The village where Heliu Sapatalo lives is one of the last Setos villages in the Skolv region. The majority of the Setos now live in the neighboring Estonia, including Helio's sister, Yi Sarv, who moved to Estonia, where the Setos are recognized as a separate ethnic group. The Seto culture is unique. We are neither Estonian nor Russian, even though we are Orthodox. We are Seto. People with our own tragic history. That's probably what makes our culture exceptional, that we seem to have two homes and our land is divided in two parts. The ancestral lands of the Setos were located west of the Peipus Lake, which is where their ancestors, the fino ugric tribes of the Chuds, or the Chud, lived. In the 16th and 17th centuries, they merged with the Krivichs and became part of the Principality of Skolv. This was the start of their separation from the closely related tribe of the Est, who fell under the influence of the Crusaders of the Teutonic and Livonian orders and were converted to Catholicism. The lands of the Skolv Chudes were joined together with the monastic lands of the Skolv Pechori Monastery and were under its auspices until 1920, when the monastery and the city of Pechori were passed to the Republic of Estonia. After the Second World War, the historic area of Setoma was divided. The modern area of the Pechorsky district, the Skolv region, was returned to Russia, and the Voru and Polva districts stayed within the borders of Estonia. The boundaries between Estonia and Russia were drawn not only across the land, but also across the families who used to live in one big country. During the tectonic shifts in history, nobody heard the voices of the small ethnicity or saw its tragedy. The village of Yisar's family remain in the Estonian part, while her relatives and her ancestral graves were in Russia, in the Skolv area, which not every Estonian Seto has access to. The result was that our land, Setoma, was divided by a so-called control line. The border split us apart from each other and separated us from our roots. Metaphorically speaking, apples that used to fall close to the tree were now isolated from it without the possibility of going back to their native land, where our entire family came from, where I grew up, and most likely would have stayed had I known that we would be divided this way. Yi and all her relatives are scattered around the villages along the borders like the apples of a family tree. She never imagined that a border that was only imaginary half a century ago would someday become real. We always lived together, visited each other's homes. I spent nearly every weekend at my sister's, and then it all stopped. Our forest started disappearing. The land deserted by people started to wither, and so did we without that land. In order to keep a connection with her native land, Yi Sarv goes to Russia every year for the Kirmash celebration. According to tradition, the whole family gets together to share a pie before the celebration. We would often bake an apple pie on the eve of Kirmash. It's the time of the savior of the apple feast. That's why we bake a pie with apples. The ritual has its peculiarity. For the family, we always mix the dough with our hands. For those that aren't family, we use a spoon. 
family has always been the foundation of life for this small group of people. As well as village feasts like Kirmash, which is celebrated to mark the end of the Assumption Fast. The Setos called this day the Day of the Mistress. This was a time of harvesting and cooking to honor the Virgin Mary and Pecco, the god of hearth and home. Another important tradition to be followed before Kirmash is going to a Seto Sana, which is also protected by the hardly noticeable wooden figure of Pekko. The person responsible for the kindling for the Sana is Hainar, Yi's brother. This is our traditional Sana. It takes at least five to seven hours to prepare it. By contrast to a Finnish sauna, the Seto sauna is heated in a black way. Smoke is used to heat the room. According to an old belief, this cleanses someone from all negativity so that they can attend the celebration renewed. Not everyone can endure a Seto sauna. One needs to get used to it. Before the trial by water, fire, and smoke, the guests gathering in Ia's house are treated to a festive pie. Most of them live in the city, so for them this is the only opportunity to connect with the history and traditions of their people. What is here? This is Haynard's workshop. He makes canales here. Do you know what that is? What is that? Do you know the name of our traditional musical instrument? Leto. But she is wrong. Leto is a traditional Estonian instrument, while the seto canal is a traditional seto instrument similar to the Russian gusli or Karelian kantale. Nobody would have made that mistake before, but times are different now. Unfortunately, modern young people don't know their culture well because they no longer live in a village. They are no longer connected to the land. This issue is not only a problem in Russia, but Estonia too. People have holiday homes and villages these days, but that's completely different. People are no longer connected to the land of Setoma. A humble mistress of the village was once the head of the Seto community and the mother of the song. In olden days, this was the title awarded to the best singers of traditional chorus songs, Lelo, which were recognized in the UNESCO representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2009. Lelo songs are improvised songs that reflect on life and the events that occur in it. This is the only form of the old Seto language that has been preserved its original sound. It's the soul of the people, if I'd say so. Yi is trying to sing a bit of one of the old songs, a lament on the sad fate of a divided people. This song was once sung by Yi's grandmother whose generation did not have the division into Russian and Estonian Seto. They all lived together on the same land, under the same sky, 
with the emergence of the so-called control line, Yi's village Mitkavitsi turned out to be cut off by a real border. The border was laid between Yi and her sister Helia, one of the last people speaking the Seto language in the Pechori land. During the holidays and every summer, she used to come and visit her aunt, who was living across the road from us. And we spent all the time together. We went to pick berries, played together in summer and in the winter. The boundary stretched from north to south for 294 kilometers, with most of it going across the Peopas Lake and the Narva River. A number of checkpoints were open on land, such as the Narva Ivangarad and the Koidula Kunichin Mountain Checkpoint. has been a special place for Yi Sar for the last 20 years. It's the only link which connects her with her native skull of land, where she returns to year after year, marking the words she once told her sister as a joke. We don't meet as often now. We always get together on special occasions. She jokingly said that there might not be a celebration, but we will always get together. Kirmash is celebrated in the school of region for a reason. Since ancient times, Kirmash was held to coincide with the harvest of which the patron god was Peko. Peko is believed to have been buried in the caves of the Pechora Monastery. Christ and the Virgin Mary were deemed to be his godparents and that this parents were simple Seto peasants. In this peculiar way, the history of christening from the ancestors in the skull of Pechori Monastery, the main shrine of the Seto, found its way into the beliefs of the people. In the morning, the descendants of the skull of Chud from all the border villages and hamlets gather at the gates of the monastery. They are still waiting for the arrival of their relatives from the Estonian side. According to tradition, they are here to meet the abbot of the monastery, but before that, they'll also meet with the Sado king. The Sado king is elected by the people who have to serve and be faithful to him. The same way that the first representative of God on earth served the Sado people. The king wears a special hat and white outfit decorated with a traditional Seto ornament. Ari Hearn is the real king of the Seto people, recognized on both sides of the border. The Pechora Seto like our idea very much, but they prefer to refer to the king of Satoma as the representative of Peko, who was believed to be buried here in the caves of the Pechori Monastery. Although it has happened that the old ladies in Pechori have mistaken the king for the priest, despite the fact that he wears white garments instead of the black that the Orthodox priests wear. Peko was baptized here, and he baptized all the Seto people here, and something in the image of the king must remind them of Peko. The Seto were called half-believers by the Russians. They were among the first of the Finno-Ugric people to convert to the Orthodox religion, but they continued celebrating their pagan holidays along with the Christian ones. For example, on the day of the Assumption of Mary, the Seto celebrate both the Virgin Mary and their god Peko. <laughs> Until now, communication is the main stumbling block between the ethnic groups on this land, both in the Skol region and in the closely related Estonia, where the Seto language is considered to be a dialect of Estonia. The problem with our language and our culture is that it's connected to the abundance of Estonian in our lives. 
We hear Estonian over the radio, over the TV. We read, write, and speak Estonian at school. Despite the fact that it's a related language, there are quite a few differences, and it's important to retain those. Otherwise, the future generations will not be able to understand our songs, the faith of our ancestors. Perhaps this is one of the main reasons why Yi Sarv goes to Russia every year, to visit her land close to the village of Mitkovitsi, to the place where she first heard her grandmother sing, where children were not separated by the border, but instead would tend the cows and get together for village feasts. <laughs> There's hardly anyone living there now, apart from her sister who Yi meets to celebrate Kirmash together. When are you coming for the celebration? I don't know, it depends on the weather and on how I'm feeling. It's as important for Yi to visit her native grounds as it is for Haleu to hear and speak her language, which is only spoken in Russia by some 100 people. Here, children born from mixed marriages speak Russian even at home. Usually they don't even know settle language. There are very few people who can speak it nowadays, so it becomes more and more difficult to preserve our songs. At one time, the Seto songs were sung all around the Pechori region. Each village had a special song day. Today, it's only one village which still has a tradition, Segova. A few years ago, the museum estate of the Seto people was built here. It is a special place for our heroines. People meet old friends here, share good and bad news, and sing songs known to them from their childhood spent in the Skold land of Setama. <laughs> This song improvisation can last for a few hours. As one person stops, another can pick it up and carry it on. This is what makes the Sedo Lelo unique. The songs continue even when the campfire dies out. A song shouldn't have boundaries by definition. That is why the song continues to sound over the land of Se Toma the next day. This time it sounds on the Estonian side, in the village of Abenitsa, where several years ago the Abenitsa Seto Museum was created to showcase the family and cultural traditions of the Seto people. The idea of creating Seto Ma emerged around 25 years ago, when the Seto were divided by a border. To stop the increasing separation, we decided to restore the tradition of meetings based on the epos of Pekka. In this epos, the representative of God before his death appoints his representative, the king of Seto, who has to hold celebrations and gather all the Seto together by the fire. This is where our family gatherings originate from. But today, those celebrations attract not only the Estonian or Skolv Seto. It's the first time in a hundred years that the relatives living in far away Siberia arrived in the land of Seto Ma to reunite with their families. 
наши предки our ancestors went to Siberia over a hundred years ago during the period of 1900 to 1914 before the First World War. No one will tell you for sure how many of us moved there, but according to the ethnographic data, there were about 3,000 people. They went there after they'd been deprived from their land as a result of Stalipin's reform. Then people were moved to Siberia in big numbers. Primarily, it affected the language and the appearance of the Siberians. And Yi Sarb, who came to visit this gathering, couldn't help but to notice it. They speak differently. They retain more Seto words, yet they speak with a special Siberian accent. In fact, it also sounds different in Estonia and in Pechora. The location also affects their costumes. They have ornaments, colors, and textures that we don't even use here. In contrast to the families from Skolv in Estonia, the Siberian Setos were moved to a completely new land. They were isolated from their own land for hundreds of years. The Partizansk area of the Krasnoyarsk region has become their new motherland, a place with its own way of living, and their culture seems to be frozen in time. One can see the tragic destiny of the divided people in the few rare photos of the Siberian Seto. A tragedy still felt today. Without a chance to retain their unity within the state borders, this small group of Fino Ugric people is trying to maintain themselves in the borders of Setoma, or the country of Seto. I think that today our main challenge is to preserve the language, the traditions, and the culture, not only in Setoma land, but also in other regions of Estonia, in the neighboring Pechori region, and in Siberia, everywhere where the descendants of the Seto can be found. This imaginary kingdom with its Seto king moves all around the Seto land where the descendants of the ancient Chud are not united by a political will, but by a common language, traditions, and songs. The songs of a small group of people who managed to preserve themselves in the center of Europe during times of change.